um, I want to thank everybody. Well, I've got a whole boatload of thank yous. All right. So the first thing I want to thank is everybody who came to our 25th birthday. This is... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'm, just, I'm just curious. How many people here went to an SPX in the old location in Holiday Inn in downtown Bethesda? I'm just curious to see. Oh, wow. We're starting to, we're starting to die. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks a lot. It means a lot to, to us for everybody to come celebrate this birthday. And this year, we, um, I think, you know, we just outdid ourselves with the number of special guests. And I want to thank, I'm not going to name all of them because I think there were like 39, how many? Right, 39 special guests. And, and a dozen of them are from uh, Europe. So we have people from the Netherlands, France, Spain, and who am I missing? Someone's going to... Denmark. Oh, how... I'm sorry. <laughs> we got like a half a dozen people from Denmark, and I forget. Okay. Um, so I want to thank all of them for coming to help celebrate. Uh, you know, I was particularly honored that uh, both Raina Telgemeier and Chris Ware came. Um, I, I don't know if you know this, but Raina... Um, got her, one of her starts was coming to SPX and selling 50 cent mini comics here at SPX. And now, anyway. <laughs> uh, I want to give a big thanks to Camilla Zhang and the people at Kickstarter. They, they've been a, a Camilla and Camilla's been a real joy to work with on this. Um, we did uh, some interest. They went ahead and said, you know, we want part of the money to go ahead and go towards uh, some of the creators. So some of the creators are getting their um, uh, their tables paid for, reimbursed, whichever way it goes, depending on when they paid. So we want to thank them for um, giving us this money to help the community. I, I also want to thank um, uh, Keith Knight for coming to... For those of you that don't know, uh, here's a man who I met at SPX in 1998, and he's got a show on Hulu called Woke, based on his life and his comics, coming, what, like sometime next spring or summer, right? Yeah, yeah and, and actually, he's really supposed to be in L.A., as opposed to here, and I'm honored that he came to join us for this. I, I also want to thank, with a touch of sadness, um, Annie Koyama for coming. This will be her last SPX, and I really appreciate her coming and supporting us and supporting the community. Um, did amazing work, amazing books, great lady. Let's give Annie a hand, okay? Many of you don't know this, but I, I'm, I'm the one who found it. I think it was up at TCAF and asked her to come down. And uh, so it's bittersweet for me to go ahead and have this be the last time she'll be coming to SPX as a publisher. So um, another uh, person who's been coming for many years, uh, self-made hero Sam Humphreys. Uh, I met him in London uh, a number of years ago along with Emma, the publisher. And they've been coming, and this year they brought uh, Tipex and Amy DeYoung, and they've been very supportive with us that every year they bring another guest over from Europe, which really, you know, flavors things up. So Sam Humphrey also. I can't clap with this. Uh, I, also want, I also want to thank um, everybody. We had, uh, over the last year, we've had uh, a number of challenges to the community. Uh, last year it was the 11. This year it was Dustin Harbin and Jeremy Sorosi who 
needed the support of the community, and the community stepped in. And I want to thank everybody for helping out when the help was really needed. Thank you very much. All right, so I, um, of course, uh, none of this goes on um, by one person or three people or what have you. So I want to go through and thank the staff of uh, the SPX Executive Committee. So I want to start up here with Dan Stafford and Francesca Lynn. Um, they're, as you can tell, they're in charge of the Ignatz Awards. Uh, we've got um, Megan, Bailey, y and Yitzi who run all the volunteer, all of the operations, everything you see in the main foyer, all of the people that get organized to handle the lines, do registration, stuff like that. They're the ones that really keep this thing moving during the 48 hours that SPX is around. Uh, as always, uh, Michael David Thomas, the Reverend Michael David Thomas. His, uh, his help is immense on so many different levels. Uh, Jamie Johnson, who has the unenviable task of grappling. I think it's bad herding the executive committee in terms of cats. Jamie has to herd hundreds of you, okay? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, Linda, um, the empress of special guests. Uh, for, with programming, a uh, big shout out, especially to Rob Clow and Danathan Mejia for putting together. And, and this year was particularly bad for them because we had one of the things that we do is that every special guest needs to get into a panel. We had 39 guests and we've only got 22 slots of programming. So they were like shoehorning stuff in. It was, it was an admirable effort. Uh, Devon Sanders, we're at Devon over here, social media. Uh, Tom Berard, Tommy B, stand up on AV. Joe and Rusty, who you see out every year uh, doing their interviews. And this year, if you haven't seen it, they put together, we put a display up of old posters. And there's one thing of flyers going back to 2003. Everybody should take a look and just see all the different art that had been over the years. Joe and Rusty pulled that together. They did a fabulous job. Uh, Megan LeBlanc, who handles our outreach to uh, local bookstores. <laughs> Catherine Fraz, who, um, to whom even I bow down when it comes to spending money. And, and she also handles the graphic novel gift program. And I think, I don't know, we've given over, I think it's over 2,000 books to local library systems. So, and actually, I, I've been to, you know, any number of ones where we turn the books over. And what's amazing is, is how few of the collections managers um, at these library systems know about what's going on in our community from anything. Okay, and so they look at this stuff, they go, oh my God, this stuff is great. And so it's, it's been real helpful to raise the consciousness of librarians in the, uh, you know, in the tri-state area in which we've been working. Um, the rest of the executive committee, Eden, Sarah, Sam, and Anna, cannot tell you how much we appreciate what you do and all the help you give. And I, I want to give a, a special shout out to Greg Bennett. Where'd he go? So, so Greg, what was your first SPX? Okay, so I, th I thought I was bad. Okay. So anyway, thanks for his counsel. Um, and have I missed anybody on the staff? I don't want to make, you know, I think that's everybody. Okay. Yeah, okay, all right. 
So I want to talk just for a second about the Library of Congress. Um, so once again, we went ahead and supported the National Book Festival. Uh, this year, we brought in Ngozi Ukazu, who did this tremendous session. Oh yeah, it was great. She was, she was magnificent. I'm hoping they're going to post that online, and then we'll let everybody know for her session. Jim Ottaviani, who does these really great science-based graphic novels. He did one of Stephen Hawking's. Um, and then I had the distinct honor of uh, introducing Raina Telgemeier on the main stage. Now, I'm used to, this is the most probably three or 400 people in here. Raina had 4,000 people at her session, okay? And she was on the main stage. The, only, the other people on the main stage were, you know, minor dignitaries like David McCullough and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Um, next year, I have, a, I have an announcement. Next year, uh, ICAF is going to co-locate with us. So we're going to have an academic uh, conference coinciding with SPX. So we're very excited about that. And, uh, you know, I think that's it for all the thank yous. How am I doing time-wise? I think we're okay, right? You got about three hours left. Oh, God. <laughs> Shoot me now, okay? <laughs> All right, I, um, before I turn the uh, lectern over to uh, Dan and Keith and everybody else and Francesca, uh, a few words I want to say on behalf of myself and the um, uh, SPX Executive Committee. SPX is a community that prides itself on diversity. It does not matter what you are or how you look. Here at SPX, you are judged on the merits of your work, your attitudes, and your deeds. We want all of you to be welcome here. So I was taken aback while I was sitting out there last year where you are now, as Carol Tyler hosted the Ignatz Awards. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> At some point late in the show, someone behind me said, why is that old person up on the stage? This was followed soon after with similar sentiments on social media. Language and attitudes that would have never been even considered for such Ignatz MCs as Spike Trotman and Sasha Velour came out all too easily for Carol, to whom we have to apologize. And I do apologize to Carol on behalf of us on the executive committee for what happened last year. This incident has had a broader impact over the last year. One creator I was hoping to get to his 25th birthday celebration cited Carol's treatment when they turned us down to be a special guest. I've had other longtime SPXers say how unwelcome they feel here, a sentiment which we found greatly disturbing. <clears throat> For 25 years, SPX has been a place where the rawest talent and the most radical new voices could sit shoulder to shoulder with experienced creators who may have already found themselves at the top of the bestsellers list revered for their craft. It's been an important part of who we are, and we don't want to see that change. I am proud, we all are, that our creative community, while imperfect, fights for inclusion and reflects an extraordinarily diverse array of perspectives and life experiences that we can all embrace and learn from. <clears throat> While people in this room face marginalization in different ways, many of you will find out what it's like to be told that you cannot learn new skills, you can't keep up the pace, and you can't relate to younger people just because of the date on your driver's license. That your works and accomplishments, past and present, don't matter because of the age lines on your face, the gray in your hair, or for that matter, having no hair at all. That you can be othered strictly on the basis of the number of times you have circled the sun, to be regretfully rendered invisible. But this so unfortunate fate is not predestined for any of us. There is no reason for the people in this room to be subjected to these attitudes. Now, this is not in any way a plea for a traditional hierarchical, deferential, respect your elders. Such respect is based on deeds, attitudes, and accomplishments, and is not there for anybody's taking. What I am asking for, what we are asking for, is that this community treats people of all ages the same way everyone else is treated, that everyone is judged based on their merits, that everyone is worthy of being talked to, that all of our creations are assessed based on personal aesthetics. I know that these are our values because we are rightfully challenged by you every single day to make sure that SPX reflects them. But in this case, and in this moment, when the incident happened on our stage, and I heard this, out there, I felt moved to speak with the support of the executive committee. I hope you'll take these remarks in the spirit that they are intended, 
and the XPX that you love will still reflect these values in another 25 years' time. Only then, maybe you'll be the one with the gray hair, or maybe no hair, welcoming the next generation of creators. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, so I'm Dan. I help to uh, coordinate the Ignatz Awards. Can you hear me? Is that all right? Good. All right, great. Um, and I just want to give you a quick slice of life uh, for the Ignatz coordinator. Uh, the address that you ship your Ignatz books to is, in fact, my house. <laughs> and uh, yes, you all know where I live, so I guess if, maybe if tonight doesn't go that well uh, for you. OK. Uh, to give you a sense, the, uh, uh, between April and June, I estimate about 1,800 pounds of books uh, were carried by my delightfully positive mail carrier, <laughs> who I tip very well at Christmas time because she's awesome. Um, sure, yeah, she is awesome. Um, this year we had uh, over 600 entries to the Ignatz Awards, which is fantastic. And I will say that one of the best parts of my year is getting to go through all of those books. I get to see every book, uh, and it really is a treat and a joy and an honor. So thank you for that. Uh, I want to also thank the jurors, uh, which you can see on the screen, uh, MK, Kelly, Chris, Rob, and Nola have the both enviable and unenviable task of reading through 600 entries between roughly June 5th and August 5th. Um, and it, they take it seriously. I talk to each of them about their different strategies for organizing and uh, keeping track of the work. And I was very impressed with the professionalism and the focus the jurors presented. So if you know any of these fine people, please send them a thank you. If you don't know them, you should. They're great. Um, so I want to say thank you. I also want to thank the volunteers. Um, while everyone is uh, you know, up on the floor doing the work, the volunteers are out uh, collecting all the ballots from everybody um, and then uh, spending a couple hours in the, uh, uh, back in the, in the little green room area counting them all, sort of hunched over like uh, accountants. Every year I think I'm going to buy them those green visor things and I just forget. Um, the last thing I want to give you is a pro tip. Uh, when you ship your boxes, this is a pro tip and a request, no more glitter. Um, <laughs> because I literally, no joke, I've gone through three vacuum cleaners this year. I also have an old dog, so it's not entirely the glitter's fault, but <laughs> enough with the glitter. Um, with that, I would like to, I'm very excited because um, this year the uh, Ignatz Awards have been sponsored by uh, Kickstarter. Uh, I'm a big fan of Kickstarter, having participated as both a uh, funder and a fundee uh, for many years now. Uh, so I was really excited about the partnership with Kickstarter. I'd like to introduce uh, Camilla Zhang, who's the Comics Outreach Lead, to come up and talk a little bit about uh, Kickstarter's programs. Thanks so much, Dan. Oh, uh, hello. Can you hear me? OK, great. Uh, Thank you so much for um, having me. I'm immensely honored to be here among such talented and thoughtful people. To me, the Ignatz Awards celebrates comics that really push the envelope, comics that big publishers are too afraid to take a chance on. Whether it's an anthology on being mixed race or retro sci-fi about immortality and the fickle perfection of the body and soul, these comics are essential to keeping us humane and at least somewhat sane. SBX has created a space that fosters and honors such creativity. Running a show like this for over two decades is no easy feat, so I want to take a moment to wish SBX a happy 25th birthday. Um, congratulations, you have now entered adulthood. A journey that can be joyous, stressful, tiresome, and lovely all at the same time. But seeing all these nominees and all of you in this room, I'm reminded of why we come to SPX in the first place. To let our freak flags fly. <laughs> I mean it, and I'm going to use 25 as my touchstone. Unless you're a vampire, 
when you hit a quarter century, you're kind of forced to start looking within. Is this the life I wanna lead? What are my priorities? Who are my real friends? Why do I give as much of a fuck as I do? And how can I start giving far fewer fucks? <laughs> when I turned 25, I got my first tattoo. It's a camellia flower. I was working at Marvel at the time, killing myself over the job, which is precisely why I got such a narcissistic tattoo. I wanted to have a permanent reminder to always live for myself. 25 is also when I started to care less about what people might think of my writing and focus more on creating stories that made me happy, stories that were uncorrupted by trends and literary pretension, stories that sought out vulnerability, that ignored rules and genre conventions, that reveled in the weird and inexplicable. And that's what the SPX spirit embodies to me. Everyone here has come to share and gush over work that's genuine and unabashedly their own. I want us to stay 25. I want us to look within, challenge our preconceived notions and priorities, stay curious, stay autonomous, and most importantly, stay freaky. Thank you. Hi, y'all. I won't take up too much time. We're 25. We can't be staying up too late, right? Right? Um, before I um, bring up our host, I just want to have like one hot tip. The award is a brick, right? It's an Ignatz, it's a brick. The bricks are not attached to the stands that they are on. So make sure you hold both things so a brick does not fall on your foot. That is my, yes, they are not okay. So I don't think our next, um, our host needs very much of a, um, an introduction. Um, he's a very talented cartoonist who is do, um, has done and is doing lectures across the um, colleges across the country. Um, please welcome to the stage, Keith Knight. All right, stop, stop. Jesus Fucking Christ, this took so goddamn long just to get me up here. <laughs> 25 years ago, Ignatz would have been done already, the award show, and we'd be drinking right now, so I'm just gonna go really fast. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you know you've made it when, when people mista mis uh, mistaken you for somebody, right? Right. So, so three times today I was mistaken for Ron Wimberly, and... Uh, <laughs> And three other times I was mistaken for this first presenter, Mr. Ben Passmore, everybody. Keith was like, uh, I was, is it okay if I make a joke about you? Uh, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was hoping it was gonna be meaner. <laughs> I was ready. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, they said for me to be quick this year because um, <laughs> uh, I'd be messy up here. I don't know if anyone remembers. Um, I, I canceled our crumb last year. So if you're wondering where he was, yeah. 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 <laughs> you got to stop. Oh, white dudes are going to email me again. Uh, and that's, that's not a judgment. <laughs> that's just a description of the emails. They're like, <laughs> I know because they're like, you should really study this medieval painter to learn about comics. <laughs> like, time traveler, how did you figure out emails? Um, so I should hurry up and cancel another beloved uh, comics figure. Uh, let me see. Uh, Chris Ware is incredibly nice. Um, Simon Hanselman, let me... Pet his bunnies. Um, can't cancel him. Um, once Gary Panther accused me of stealing a book. Um, so the nominees are. <laughs> Do I just read the shit out? I thought there was things. I thought there was shit gonna happen. Who the fuck's running this? <laughs> oh, there we go. Y'all gaslit me. Um, uh, 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 oh, so the, this is for outstanding stories. Did I mention that? Um, so the nominees for Outstanding Stories are, um, oh, I'm looking at the wrong shit. <laughs> they asked me to do it again. 
I was like, really? <laughs> I'm going to slow this shit right down. Me and Warren. <laughs> like, take for, all right. Um, Sacred Heart, Volume 2, Part 1, Living in the Future uh, by Liz Suburbia from Egg Cream 1 by Chat Books. Uh, sincerely, no, that's Michael DeForge. I'm not, I'm doing outstanding story, right? Yeah. yeah. Where is Michael DeForge on here? Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Michael DeForge is great, though. Uh, sincerely, <laughs> sincerely, Harriet. Where is it? Liz again. Shout out to Liz. Um, me as a baby from Lou Six. I'm gonna go check something out. Okay. I was, I was trying to think of what I was doing at 25. <laughs> Ad lib. All right, yeah. Did you see me doing it? All right, hold on. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, and I was like, what is the move at 25? And I'm like, well, what was I doing? So if you want, if you want all of this, um, <laughs> all the success, you, um, you, uh, you get really into folk punk. <laughs> I know half the room saw the fitted and was like, surely he listens to Smino. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't sweat the spot slideshow. Don't sweat it. Okay. All right. He told me to stop talking. Um, <laughs> that's not true. All right. We're supposed to ignore the slideshow. Um, <laughs> don't look at it. Don't look at this shit. I didn't even get my joke off. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so we said Liz. Um, uh, Sincerely Harriet by uh, Sarah Winifred Searle. Yup. Um, Woman World by Amunder Dhaliwal, uh, drawn accordingly. Uh, the Dead Eye and the Deep Blue Sea by Vanek Anand Prum, uh, Southern S Stories Press. And uh, Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Marika Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Okay, in the winter... Let me put the shit back. Um, okay. Uh, and the winner is... Uh, Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me and Marika Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Uh, tonight, both from Rico and myself, because she couldn't be here. Um, so you guys are going to have to hear all of my thank yous. Uh, oh, I'm shaking. Sorry. Um, thank you now and always to Mariko Tamaki, first and foremost, my hero turned collaborator, uh, to Charlie and Kiara and Callista and Gina and Mark at First Second, who showed unimaginable faith uh, in me when I felt that I had done so little to deserve it and to my family, both the one that raised me and to the one that came to me later down the line, um, to Blas, Joanna, and Lauren, to everyone in this room, os quiero muchísimo a todos. Um, this book changed my life and almost killed me. Um, its place in my heart is indelibly etched and it overwhelms me to think that it has a place in any of your hearts as well. Um, reading Mariko's work in high school was the thing that made me decide that telling stories was something worth devoting my life to, um, that if I could make something that could affect another person the way that skim affected me, if I could bridge the space between myself and another human being with that much sincerity and grace, that my life would be worthwhile. It was one of the books that made me realize that comics in their best possible iteration are a place of connection, of shelter, 
a way to see and be seen and to make this world feel that much more radiant and beautiful than chaotic and cruel. And I don't know if I'll ever feel like I have succeeded in doing any of that with my work. It's a lofty goal. But to be standing here in front of all of you, in front of heroes and peers and friends I have met through this gorgeous community that are family to me now is more than I had hoped I would get out of this life. Um, I will never be able to thank you all enough for letting me be this person and inhabit this space with all of you, for not only hearing what I, what Mariko, what we all have to say, but for catching it with open arms. Thank you for letting me share my shelter with you, and thank you for sharing yours with me. Excellent. So I kind of feel r really crass saying this, but I have two drink tickets for you. I've, uh, <laughs> you know, after saying all that really deep shit, I'm like, should I offer her drink tickets? So here's the thing with the drink tickets. I, I hosted this uh, awards show 15 years ago, and I made uh, the very poor mistake of uh, telling them, give me a bottle of tequila, because uh, I want to do shots. You know, everybody who wins has to do shots when they come up. And they're like, oh, what happens if they're an alcoholic or they're pregnant? And I said, they don't have to do sh the, the shots. I'll do the shots if they turn it down. <laughs> so I ended up doing 10 shots, and I was a mess. So this year, to pay homage to that, I'm just offering you two drink tickets. And you could, yeah, yeah. So just pass it back, everybody. <laughs> I'm watching all of you. I'm watching all of you. All right, let's get to the best mini, mini comic, everybody. Shin Yun Kaur, everybody. Shin Yun Kaur. Don't worry, I'm not funny. <laughs> I am so excited for the nominees for Best Mini Comic this year. It is a showcase of the best and brightest of us, and bravest of us, supported by amazing small presses like Short Box and Diskette Press, Birdcage Bottom and Kilgore, who are doing such experimental, honest, and revolutionary work. The nominees for Outstanding Mini Comic are Sorry, I'm going to read this small. Trans Girls Hit the Town by Emma Jane. <laughs> Gonzalo by Jed McGowan. Silver Wire by Creota Wilberg. <laughs> Cherry by Inez Estrada. And Yellow, Yellow, Yellow by Mar Julia. <laughs> and the Ignats for Outstanding Mini Comic goes to Trans Girls Hit the Town by Emma Jane. <laughs> So it is extremely funny to me that I'm up here um, because one year ago on the drive home from SPX, um, my wretched, tired brain decided to combine the name of a certain celebrity with a certain sexual act. And I was like, okay, I'm, I, now I have to make a comic whose entire purpose is to include this shitty portmanteau. Um, <laughs> But then what sprung up around it was actually um, a little more special than I thought it was going to be. Um, 
we're getting more stories about trans people and trans women. I'm biased um, <laughs> in comics in general, I feel like. But something I want to see more of is trans women talking to each other. And that's just something, I, I don't know. It's just this weird, strange texture whenever dumbasses like us get in the same place <laughs> that I, I don't know, I want to capture and share with the world. Um, so I'm going to thank some people quick. I want to thank my dear, dear friends, EJ and Casey and Carta, for all the stuff they've done for me, both in comics and not in comics, and also to the delightful Renee, or Re, for printing so many things for Disquette, including the reason why there are so many copies of my book at the show. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you. All right, uh, let's, oh, here, please, can you pass this? Uh... <laughs> I actually like the fact that everyone's passing it uh, to everybody. That's, that's comics, man, that's comics. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's get right to best collection. Uh, next presenter, Emmy Guinness, everybody. <laughs> Remember, it's two things. <laughs> Be careful. Uh, <laughs> right, they told us to keep it brief, and uh, everyone who knows me knows I talk too much. Uh, so I didn't write anything down, so this will be brief and messy. <laughs> uh, I'm really honored to be presenting collections. This is the 10th anniversary of me coming to SBX for the very first time. And... <laughs> I showed up with a mini comic that was a collection of short stories, which probably a lot of you did. Um, and that's a very common experience. Uh, sometimes I read a positive review of a collection of a very young or new artist, and I will see in that review including included something like, oh, this artist is, is ready for a long form story, but writing short form narratives is really hard, uh, which I hear regularly from my students who I <laughs> force to make short narratives, <laughs> much to their chagrin. Uh, it takes a certain amount of finesse and discipline to construct an effective narrative in that amount of space. Uh, and when we as readers read collections, we are able to see an artist's world through many different windows and walk away with an understanding of them and their work that is more multifaceted than we might be able to otherwise. So the nominees are uh, Love Letters to Jane's World by Paige Braddock. <laughs> Girl Town by Casey Nowak. <laughs> Dirty Plot by Julie Doucet. <laughs> Leaving Richard's Valley by Michael DeForge. <laughs> and This Woman's Work by Julie Delport. Sealed with a sticker, it makes it seem very official. Uh, okay, this is two different things. <laughs> the winner is Girl Town by Casey Nolan. <laughs>
Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I was sitting at my chair trying to like write a speech, and I kept writing, I hate it when people get sentimental about comics. <laughs> But, and I was like, this sucks, I can't do this. <laughs> like, I've got nothing here. Um, I was just sitting in my seat crying for Emma because I'm so proud of her. So, like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, so I guess I should thank people, too. Um, pretty much all the same people Emma thanks. <laughs> um, thanks, Carta um, and EJ, who took me in after I got divorced and basically saved my life. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and and Emma, of course, who is like such a dear friend to me, and Renee, who has done something probably. <laughs> no, she helped me keep it together. She's really great. Um, yeah, no, comics has made my life incredibly like precious. So I don't like. I should get sentimental about them, and I do like privately all the time. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, there's so much you can do here, <laughs> and so accessible, whoa. <laughs> and then I go on Twitter, and I'm like, fuck all that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, um, I'm proud of this book. I'm excited for whatever's next, and I'm just gonna keep talking if I don't walk away now, so bye. <laughs> So um, I just want to acknowledge the folks from the Nib are here. I just want to give it up for the folks from the Nib. Uh, the Nib is nominated for two Ignats. Ignatzes. That's a good thing. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they're nominated in the same category, which is a bad thing. Um, and another bad thing is that everyone on the Nib just recently got laid off, which is a bad thing. But, but two of them just had babies, so they're getting laid too, so that's a good thing. That's my joke. Um, <laughs> next up for best anthology is Hazel New Levant, ladies and gentlemen. everybody. I wrote a quick thing about anthologies and why I love them, just to get everyone all that much more psyched to find out who the winner is. So uh, I'm thrilled to be presenting this award because comics anthologies are, are so important to me as a form. I love reading them, and I love them as a group effort. Whether the organizing principle is a topic, theme, spotlighting a particular group of creators, or just the editor's sensibilities, it's great to see how the comics inform each other and flow together. Um, anthologies are an opportunity to cover a topic from many different angles and viewpoints in one book, the, thus creating a rich tapestry. Uh, many of my early comics were for a zine anthology series called Stumptown Underground, and I really appreciated how the submissions guidelines gave me direction and focus, helped me generate ideas, and the group effort it put me in touch with the larger comics community. Uh, anthologies are also torchbearers of the short form, the art form of short comics. Uh, which are a valuable mode of expression for any artist, but they're often particularly important for developing cartoonists. Uh, they can bring together artists with varying levels of recognition, and that rising tide lifts all boats, putting eyes on newer creators. Also, publishing a book with a spine opens up avenues of distribution that aren't available for stapled comics, and it can get the work into more bookstores, comics shops, and libraries than would otherwise be possible. For me, and for a lot of other people, those avenues of distribution opened up much sooner because we could band together and create anthologies rather than each having to finish our own graphic novel. Um, and I'm really grateful for the bonds that I've forged through working on anthologies with people. Uh, I want to recognize the work of the editors who have the vision to define an anthology, select the contributors, shepherd them through finishing their stories, and figure out how to make all those stories work together. Um, and in the era of crowdfunded anthologies, I know all of the nominees this year were 
funded through Kickstarter. Many editors are also publishers dealing with marketing, printing, distribution, contributor payments, and more. And the goal of all this is to support and showcase the work of the contributors who pour their hearts and effort into their pieces, and they often also put time and energy into helping the crowdfunding campaign succeed. So all of these nominations honor every contributor, editor, and person who's worked on these anthologies in any capacity. Uh. <laughs> The nominees for Outstanding Anthology are Electrum, edited by Dershin Helmer. <laughs> Wayward Sisters, edited by Allison O'Toole. <laughs> Family, the Nim Magazine, edited, <laughs> edited by Matt Bors, Matt Libchansky, and Larry Harris. Death, the Nim Magazine, also edited by Matt Boris, Matt Lubchansky, and Larry Harris. And We're Still Here, an all-trans comics anthology, edited by Tara Avery and Gene Thornton. And the winner of Outstanding Anthology is We're Still Here, an all-trans comics anthology. giving this brick to? Are Tara or Jean here? Uh, well, God, that anthology rocks. I don't know. Melanie, you're in it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for putting you on the spot. Oh, my God. That's what I get for sitting in the front row, jeez. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, I'm incredibly honored to be up here and to be a part of this anthology and incredibly honored that we are uh, finally at a point where we're able to center the voices of trans and non-binary people in comics. It's been a long time coming and we have a long ways to go, but I'm so grateful that this is possible now. So thank you all for this. <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's get on with it. Best series, Mike Freiheit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mike, Mike Freiheit. Hello, comics friends. Can you hear me? Sweet. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. I love you. Um, I'm going to keep it real uh, quick, just because I don't want to start like farting uncontrollably or... <laughs> vomit on the mic, so I don't want to have someone deal with that. Um, I just want to say comics are fucking hard, as we all know. Uh, most of the time you're making them by yourself and don't have a lot of interaction with other people, um, except, you know, maybe the internet, so, you know, robot voices. Um, and continuing to make a series is really hard, just sticking with something and really trying to um, share your own voice with people can be really difficult and it's not always easy. So I just want to say that all these nominees rock and uh, let's get to the nominees. Okay. I've got a list on my phone. Because <laughs> fuck paper, right? <laughs> okay. Outstanding series. Um, the Nib Magazine, edited by Matt Boris. Uh, Day Glow A Hole Quarterly by Ben Passmore. <laughs> Heavenly Blues by Ben Kahn and Bruno Hidalgo. <laughs> Frontier by Youth in Decline. <laughs> and In Games by Ru Zhu. The Ignatz goes to the Nib Magazine. Yeah. 
Thanks. Hey, all right. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> thanks a lot. Um, this feels really great. I know uh, <laughs> I've been coming to SBX since uh, 2004, uh, which, you know, I had little stapled mini comics that a weird comics collector guy uh, named Warren Bernard was going around picking up. And, uh, you know, I didn't really know anybody then, and the comic scene was far less diverse than it is now. And I knew what I wanted to do, to do in comics, and I feel like I, I've done that with the nib, and, you know, now I'm like emailing people like Keith Knight and telling them that where's his fucking comic because he missed his deadline two days ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I, I've worked with so many of you who have, who have uh, made this magazine possible. I feel like I could throw this brick out in the audience and there'd be like a 50% chance that I could knock out a nib contributor. <laughs> um, but, you know, this, 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 goes, this isn't just um, for, for us. This is, you know, uh, Larry and Matt have been with me for... And Andy too for like since almost the beginning, which was six years ago now. And uh, also Sarah Merck, who's not here, who's uh, edited with us and got laid off recently. And then uh, Mark Kaufman deserves a shout out for being the designer on this magazine, which looks gorgeous. And um, and of course all all the contributors online or in the magazine and. Uh, you know, it, a lot of stuff's been going on with the nib, but uh, it's still going on. And uh, we're still publishing online. I'm still going to make the um, the magazine. There's just been some some setbacks, um, but it's good to to be here with all of you uh, right now during this moment because it's like this feels like our people, you know, more than uh, the new media world. Uh, I just I won't name any names, but just. <laughs> Some, s some people in you know, the new media world aren't great, <laughs> no, whereas, whereas in comics, they all are. Um, so I don't want to say too much, but if you guys want to say anything, you should. Yeah, I just want to thank all the contributors that we've worked with. This magazine and this publication wouldn't be anything without you all. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks again, everyone, to work with. I love you all very much. And also to our uh, endlessly patient partners who put up with uh, a lot of craziness. Uh, I love you very much, Jai. Also, hello. Oh, yeah, that's good. Right. That's all I got. Thanks to fucking Matt Boris for starting this thing and keeping it going after it. We need eight drink tickets. <laughs> So, <clears throat> back in the day, uh, when SBX first started, it foolishly was on Friday and Saturday. And Sunday was a, a softball game, which didn't make sense to me at all. And every year I would say, why is this on Friday and Saturday? Like, if a bad, like, storm comes through on Saturday, like... It, the SBX is toast, it's, and, and they would always say, oh, but the softball game, the softball game. <laughs> and here's the argument that I think changed their minds. I said, and it wasn't just me, <laughs> but I said, you know, the Ignats is on Saturday, and all these people win, and everybody's like, oh, I want to pick up these winners, and there's no SBX on Sunday! <laughs> and the next year... SBX was on Sunday. So, all of you, pick up the winners, pick up the nominees, show your love tomorrow. That's as nice as I'm gonna act tonight. Uh, best online, uh, to present best online comic, uh, Carter, uh, Carta Monir, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, it's me, Carter Monier. Um, I won this award last year, so whoever does end up winning it has size 14 women's shoes to fill. Um, that's a joke because I'm transgender. Um, before presenting this award, I just wanted to use this public platform to um, talk about how bad things are in the world real quick. Um, 
Things are really bad in the world, like extremely bad, and it is a privilege to be able to sit here in this room with all of you. Um, earlier today, I visited um, Chelsea Manning in prison. It was fucking terrible. It was bad. It was very painful to see my friend behind a pane of glass talking through the phone. And she was still just a big, dumb nerd, really excited about what was happening at the Comics Festival. And... It just made me think a lot about how it could be any of us very, very easily. And as a community, we really do have an important responsibility to not only tell interesting stories, but tell stories that um, facilitate um, making our place better um, substantially than it is right now. Um, so with that, now that the moralizing... <laughs> The nominees for Best Online Comic, or Outstanding Online Comic, we have Isle of Elsie by Alec Longstrath. We have That's Not My Name by Hanako Lambert. What Doctors Know About CPR by Nathan Gray. About Face by Nate Powell. and Full Court Crush by Hannah Blumenreich. And I'm pleased to announce that the winner is Full Court Crush by Hannah Blumenreich. previous hit, picking up the award for the Elements comic. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah has allowed me to do this free of my makeup. She said it's what Jamila Jamil would want. <laughs> and I agree. Uh, she has given me some words for you all. Okay, so here's what happened. I had about a year until my next convention, and I wanted to make something new. I planned a sci-fi comic that I was really into. She was. It was pretty long, but I had a year, so I figured I'd be fine. Unfortunately, the licensed series I was signed on to write kept eating up my time with rejected pitches and script revisions. And I realized I wouldn't have enough time to make my sci-fi comic. So, time for plan B. Plan B was to make another shorter mini, and that was realistically doable with the time I had. But instead, I continued to be hit with more pitch rejections more script revisions, more emails with middleman editors passing on reductive decisions made by a chain of brand-maintaining higher-ups who kept everything moving at a snail's pace. You know how it goes. <laughs> the series wasn't going anywhere. Like, literally, it never went anywhere. The first issue's release had been delayed for well over a year. But I quit. I kind of felt kind of bad about it. Accepting that series had allowed me to walk away from another big comics publisher. I had hoped having my own series would show them up, but I never got the chance. So I felt bad. Anyways, it was February and had a month until the con. I still wanted to make something new. I decided to make a little one-off mini about a jock and a nerd who fall in love. And I refused to fail at it. It was fueled almost entirely by the total failure of the series I'd just quit. <laughs> I wanted to prove myself. I had to. And then it did go very well. Like, stupidly well. Like, I did not foresee it would go as well as it did. <laughs> even though Shivana kept telling me it would do well, but I didn't listen. <laughs> and the real lesson here is to always listen to Shivana. <laughs> I told her. <laughs> I wrote that, and she isn't making it up. I wrote that in, too, and that. <laughs> the truth is, those corporations that hired me because they liked what I had brought to the table had no interest in giving me a spot at that table. And life's too short to live on corporate time. I continue to work on the projects I started, but set aside. I'm working and, over wor and worrying over big new secret things. I still doubt myself some days, and I still tell her she's wrong. 
I still lose time on those projects. But the person who doubts me is me, and the person who loses my time is me, and not a throng of faceless higher-ups who will never read my work. I hope you continue to like the things I make, but more than that, I hope you continue to like them. Thank you. Exit pursued by Bear. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like Hollywood, actually. <laughs> um, I'd like to acknowledge 1999's um, Ignatz Award winner for uh, Promising New Talent, Mr. Stephen Notley over here. Bob the Angry Flower. <laughs> Steve is proof that these awards are at best 50% accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I am not saying which way it went. <laughs> So, oh, where's my list? Can I have the list? This is our best new talent. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Bianca Uniz is going to present the next, uh, uh, next award for best new talent. Sorry guys, this is my first X SPX, like ever. <laughs> so like, thank you all for having me. I um, also just wanna, like I know a lot of you guys read my tweets. Uh, <laughs> and I, a lot of you have like come up to my table and were like, hey, I know you've been like going through a hard time and um, we appreciate your voice and you're important to be here. And like, I know that uh, I haven't like personally said thank you to all, everyone who's like reached out to me, but not to like bring the the mood down. But thank you for letting me know how loved I am. That meant a lot to me. <laughs> anyway, I remember when I won promising new talent. <laughs> <laughs> the year was 2017. Now I'm all old and, and used, <laughs> no longer promising and new. You know, the, the really cool thing about this award is when I was a child, my mom used to read me Leo the Late Bloomer. I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with that children's book. Um, but I'm, I'm 32, don't be fooled by the melanin. <laughs> and I won the award, I was 30 years old, and I always kind of felt like I was like a day late behind everybody else. I always kind of felt like I was trying to catch up to everyone. People kind of knew what they wanted to do right at the jump, and I was kind of like figuring things out. My mom always like, oh, you always squander and like flounder your time, and it kind of took me a minute to find my footing. And so when I was presented with this award for 2017, and my, my play sister, Shannon, accepted it for me, and I, I'm pretty sure I made her talk about Mothman and Keanu Reeves. Um, oh, that too. Um, <laughs> You know, it just kind of made me feel like, okay, like, I'm not this old, used up, like, I know I know people, like, who are, like, over 30, or, like, you're not old, Bianca, but, like, in my head, I'm just, like, you see all these wonderkins at, like, 18, like, having four books out, and you're like, I wasted my whole life, and, <laughs> you know, but it's just kind of, I'm just really grateful for this community that shows, even like it doesn't, you don't have to be 12, you can be 55, you can be 75, and if you wanna have a career in comics, you can do it. You just need like a heart and a pen and some paper. So. I'm now just gonna read the names and if I mess up anyone's name, welcome to my world. The nominees for Promising New Talent are Haley Buck, <laughs> Ebony Flowers, <laughs> Emma Jane, 
Mar Julia. And Kelsey Wharton. Okay, and um, the winner is Ebony Flowers. Oh, Ebony, I was like, I was worried you like went to bed or something, girl, come on. trying to grab my cigarette. Okay. So I was not expecting this. Um, I'm pushing 40, so you make me feel really old. <laughs> like, it's not going to all that. Um, and so, yeah, the last time anyone has ever called me promising and new was like 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to thank uh, Drawn and Quarterly for believing in my work. Um, I came into comics late for, I guess, most people. I started drawing, or even like reading comics when I was 30. Um, and I'm 38 now, so you can do it anytime. Um, and, and I'm not an artist, that's not my background. My background's biology and anthropology, and yeah. Um, so, this is, so this is a little shocking. Um, so, and I wasn't planning to make Hot Comb uh, for anyone. I was just making those comics for myself. So it's nice to see um, people uh, receive it uh, well and talk to me about it and, and share their own stories with me. Um, and I'd like to thank my husband who's not here. He's taking care of our three month old and um, upstairs. Uh, and I'd like to thank him for his health insurance too. It's, it's made it possible for me to work on this. Um, yeah, and, and I, I was at SPX the first time two years ago and I never uh, really thought that I would uh, be sharing my comics with everyone because I'm a pretty uh, introverted person. Um, so yeah, it's just really nice to be here and I'm, I'm happy to see everyone smiling and cheering and stuff, so thank you. All right, let's get uh, right to Outstanding Comic. Uh, J.T. Yost is going to present the next uh, J.T. Yost. Hello, everybody. Uh, Bianca, wherever you are, I read Leo the Late Bloomer to my son just the other day. Um, so Dan texted me yesterday and asked if I would present. And uh, I told my wife, and she asked, you know, what does that mean? What do you have to do? What do people do? And I said, well, some people do characters. Uh, some people have very sincere inspiring speeches. Some people shit on our crumb. <laughs> um, you know, it runs the gamut. And she said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, I have a lot to do for SPX, so I'm probably just going to be woefully unprepared. Um, but then the Lord smiled and sent me a three-hour traffic jam. Uh, <laughs> just getting out of New York, so I had some time to think. And uh, I, w I was thinking about, I went to the Met um, the week before. Uh, if you're from New York, it, I, it wasn't the lumber place, it was the museum. <laughs> um, but so I was there, and I, I always go and look at, I really like, uh, like Flemish 15th, 16th century religious art. I'm not sure why, but that's, I really like it, so I always go seek that out. So I went, I was looking at that, and then I went, you know, a few rooms away, and there's um, abstract expression in this art, and I was, so I'm sitting in the car, and I was thinking, you know, about the relationship between those two, because they're just so disparate, 
And I started thinking about it. You know, one is, say, a pretty straightforward narrative about the Annunciation, you know, the angel, whatever, announcing, I don't know my Bible, but announcing the birth of baby Jesus. And then on the other hand, you've got abstract expressionism, like Rothko, say, is just trying to like pare things down to the essential, but both of them, what they have in common is telling a story and, you know, communicating and trying to get some kind of a human connection. Um, and I thought, you know, that's the same thing that we do in comics. There's so many different approaches. It's, it's so varied, but we're all just trying to make a connection, tell a story. Uh, so that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you. I am doing, what did I choose? Outstanding Comic, which I chose because I can pronounce almost all of the names correctly. Um, we've got Lorna by Benji Nate. <laughs> Infinite Wheat Paste number seven by Pidge. The Saga of Metalbeard by Joshua Padden and Matthew Hadi. Egg Cream by Liz Suburbia. And Check Please by Ngozi Ukazu. And the winner is Check Please by Ngozi Ukazu. Hello. I am not Ngozi. She, unfortunately, she couldn't make it here. I'm her manager, George Rohack. Um, she wanted me to say that she thanks everyone for their support and recognition of Check Please, and that most of all, she wants to thank everyone who has supported her in the comic over the past six years. It means a great wealth to her, and everyone who has believed in Biddy's story. Thank you so much. <laughs> And why I keep on leaving that there. Okay, really quick, uh, outstanding graphic novel, Karen Katz is going to present the next one. Karen Katz. Hi, uh, I'm Karen. This is Kat. I'll explain. Um, I didn't actually think of this, but I, this is dangerous, and I did break my foot, and Kat was the one treating it, so it's also good. You know what to do. But that's not the reason. Um, so I was told I, I, I could um, just say a little bit what comics make me feel. And so it makes me feel like translation, things that you share that become other things. And it's also the farthest you can go for something that you really want to always hold on to, even though you can't. But what you get to keep is the wanting. Um, and so I was wandering around the floor, and Leon said, Karen, Dan's looking for you. He's downstairs. I ran downstairs. Um, I ran past a room in the karaoke where we all just sang, Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer. And I felt that the hands holding these scissors were coming closer, holding tiny dancer legs to my chest. And I was thinking, oh my god, I'm running with scissors. I kept running. It felt like an achievement. I didn't find Dan, but... I, I did achieve something, so I felt good. I went back upstairs. I asked Leon, Leon, where's Dan? Dan uh, Leon said, Dan's downstairs. I went downstairs. <laughs> there were scissors on the table, so I took them. I had two now. <laughs> I didn't find Dan. I found Sarah. Sarah said um, what to do, open the envelope. I said yes confidently. I was holding two pairs of scissors. <laughs> I ran back upstairs looking for Kat to consult Kat, my table mate. Um, uh, I looked at Kat for a while. Kat is used to this. 
then she said, what do you need? I said, scissors. She, I, I got three. And so my mission became, oh my God, I'm going to be carrying the most scissors at a festival. <laughs> then I looked around on the floor. Um, and then my mission became, oh, it's going to be most beautiful scissors. <laughs> now, you may think this has nothing to do with graphic novels, but it is because... <laughs> because I think <laughs> I think it's really important um, to think of it as cartography that's not being read as a map, but, but as an acknowledgement that it's a dreamer waking up dreaming about cartography. And and um, then I got to I said, Kat, I must write some notes about what to say. Uh, and by notes, I mean, we talked for a while about the different colors of post-it notes. <laughs> and <laughs> although voca the vocabulary in that space between us was only about office supplies, it didn't seem to be very sincerely and deeply about comics. And we had no <laughs> other choice but to demonstrate this. So we will. And, uh, and I feel like it's a hug drawn by office supplies. <laughs> uh, so, this, is this mine? No. Oh, it's not. Where is it? Oh, of course. <laughs> Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, when I read out loud, I turn British. <laughs> Outstanding graphic novel. Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariku Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Um, Upgrade Soul by Ezra Clayton Daniels. Women World by Aminda Daliwal. I get to say this in Hebrew. Hi, Winman by Corinne Chadmi. <laughs> and Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. Oh my God, Laura Dean keeps breaking up. in here. <laughs> this one's for all of you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. So we all know who to go to for drink tickets tonight. All right, let's, uh, um, the next, and uh, we're almost over here. Uh, outstanding artists, uh, let's hear it for Richie Pope. Uh. I'm putting it down because I dropped it last year. <laughs> when I won, I dropped it like right outside the door, so it was pretty funny. Um, it's been a lot of good like black jokes tonight, and I feel bad because like Ben took some of mine and like <laughs> and like Keith and Bianca told like a 30 joke, and I was like, God damn, I have to like delete everything. So I did write a little something. Uh, so my first SPX was 2014. 
before I came here, I was like, I thought it was just weird as fuck. Uh, and then, and then I found y'all, um, and y'all are y'all are weird as fuck. Um, uh, and th and that I feel like makes us all you know feel a little bit normal. So, um, so I won it last year for this category, and um, SPX told me that uh, the winner has to fight me, and um, if if they win, then they get it. Uh, but if I win, I get it again. Uh, that's, that's just how it works. It's, it's always been that way. Um, uh, so yeah, for Outstanding Artist, um, whenever I think about that, I just really think about somebody who can draw their ass off. Like, everybody can make comics, and some people can make really great comics. Um, so, the nominees are Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. Corin Shadme, Highwayman. Lucy Nisley, uh, Kid Gloves. Sloan Leong, Prism Stalker. And Ezra Clayton Daniels for Upgrade Soul. The winner doesn't actually have to fight me. I, I, I can't fight anyway, so I'm not gonna lie. And the winner is Rosemary Valero O'Connell. <laughs> Lord, you keep breaking up with me. Um, fuck. Uh, thank you, God. Thank you to Paloma, to Sunmi, to Mar, to Chan, to Sage, to all of the people in this room, to Hand. I can't even, I can't start naming names because I'll never stop. Um, this is all I've ever wanted to do. This is like all I've ever wanted to be. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, this took so goddamn long. This took so goddamn long that I'm just gonna quickly just, you know, for lack of time, I'm just gonna finish the last three. Most overuse of the color red. This is Sunburned Santa versus Satan, the Crimson Chronicle, Chronicles, Volume Two. Uh, controversy of the year, all the black cartoonists in the E section. And uh, most overdue Kickstarter. Me, I won, I won. But I'm out of uh, drink tickets. So good night, everybody.